because it feels like home even if you're not originally from here and it's not so touristy even though it's a very like hot vacation spot. Have you ever heard of something called Agenda 21? Agenda what? <laughs> it's a policy that's been adopted by the Board of Supervisors and instead of using the American separation of powers, you know, legislative, executive, and judicial, and due process, they're implementing the European Union governance where everything's run from The Hague and people have very little to say yeah. according to because they think they can plan a better world. That's very interesting. So in the Santa Cruz County, we're not really going to have de democratic due process? That's, that's, it's already happened. They've already wow. Happened. He sits on the House Appropriations Committee and also the Subcommittee on Agriculture, Rural Development, and the Federal Drug Administration. And he also co-chairs the House Ocean Caucus and Congressional um, Caucus on Travel and Tourism. Um, for me, having worked with Sam in the past, um, I think one of the things that makes him such a great representative for our area is that being here tonight and uh, to listen to our concerns and he, I know for a fact that he takes those back to Washington and shares them with his colleagues and advocates on our, our behalf. So um, please join me in welcoming Sam Farr, and thank you so much for being here. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. That's Kimberly Peterson, who's the mayor of Watsonville. And uh, she didn't announce that she also has a conflict of interest because she started working here in the area in my office. You've been a long-term supporter of Agenda 21. Now, I've been studying... I don't even know what that... That was around about 10 years ago, some proposal, but I don't even know what it is. I mean, was the politicians lying with his lips It was a, a proposal which was guised under the essence of environmentalism, uh, but in essence, when one digs deeper into Agenda 21, which Santa Cruz was selected as one of the premier test cases for Agenda 21 back in 1970. And it links back into this one world order or new world order agenda, which is trying to take governance away from the people and hand it to these administrative agencies who are not in any control of the people. Do you have any examples of that here in Santa Cruz County? What, what are and just most classic, the red tag process. The red tag process in our county is administered by our county without any due process of law under the constitutional guidelines or under common law guidelines. Uh -huh. We have we have it for zoning violations. Yeah, we have administrative yeah. procedures where the county becomes our judge. They also make the code. So they are legislature, mm -hmm. our judiciary, and they're our punisher. They are. So you think that's all part of Agenda Twenty One? Yes, you're talking about the difference between checks and balances with the House of Representatives and the Senate. Mm -hmm. And uh, the same thing that's happened within the supervisory districts we found in, the, in Santa Cruz and in Monterey, an appeals board for housing and for building has been totally taken away and they've adopted this Agenda 21, uh, which is so-called harmonizing laws. They're making them similar throughout the United States, taking away due process in anticipation of a North American Union, the same thing they did in Europe. Okay. Agenda 21 was adopted by the uh, Santa Cruz Board of Supervisors, and it says right here, congratulations by Sam Farr, Congressman, and that you're carrying it to the other two counties, so your stated ignorance of this is, is not truthful. This type of law is being imposed in the cities, 
and in the counties, and they're stripping away due process, checks and balances. People have lost in Santa Cruz County alone at least a half a billion dollars, forcing them to go to attorneys and other people with an out of control uh, uh, planning department and other departments. I wish you'd get back to understanding the value and the uniqueness of the United States with its checks and balances, uh, with due process, the separation of powers, legislative, executive, and judicial. This United Nations thing is a fraud on the people and they want to crush the, the, the sovereignty of the United States, create a North American Union, the same thing they did in Europe. Three countries in Europe got to vote on it, they all voted it down and they're all being forced under control of Brussels. You have no idea the freedom you're losing, this, this uh, changing the American currency, the dollar, to the Amer or, or a world currency. It's all about world government and his supporters like Packard who hide their billions in, in foundations. And that's your endorsement of this program and you say you're going to carry it to all three counties. Governor Schwarzenegger issued, he was here actually visiting, you know, and met with some of the supervisors, and he issued an executive order suspending fees. It was actually uh, mailed to everybody. I don't know if you read it or if you're even aware of his executive order because of the fires that took place, allowing property owners to clear their area for safety so that their, the, the debris that was caused by the fires wouldn't pollute the watersheds. One the property owner was clearing his area and he got a red tag, a violation for following even the Army Corps of Engineers procedures on clearing his lot. I mean, it was devastating. And if he didn't clean it up, it would have, uh, you know, when the rains hit, it would just flood the whole watershed. The, the creek would have been all sludged up and everything. The guy did a beautiful job. Instead of getting kudos and paying attention, and being supported for the work that he was trying to do to clean his property. Just young, a young couple mm -hmm. just bought a little small farm, and you got code enforcement officers going there and threatening these people with prison, sick and fishing game on them, and the district attorney to go after them, all this stuff, Sam. You know? I mean, what, what, what are people supposed to do when they go down there, you know, and they try to talk to them? First of all, you got these you got these officials coming out. They're intimidating enough as it is, and then you lost everything you own. And you're trying to clean it up and build again, and all they're doing is giving this family a hard time. Santa Cruz Planning Department. My name is Travis Smith. My property here that got burnt down in the Trabing fire. Did you get permission to, to to grow the grass? I got a stop work order from doing my erosion control. Um, trying to get this erosion control done before winter before it becomes a huge mess and floods the road. So. Well, in this county takes permission to grow grass, to save your neighbors and your property from erosion. Now you have a sign over here, it's uh, no trespassing. Yeah, we had a meeting scheduled and three days in advance of the meeting, I found them past the gate, walking around, uh, trying to collect evidence against me. But they're screwing you and then wanting you to pay them $150 an hour, is that right? They told me um, that go ahead and apply for your building permits um, we won't hold this red tag against you. We just want you to clean up. And so I paid them uh, $5,500, got $30,000 worth of paperwork together that they require. And then when I turned in the building permit and I'm paying $155 an hour for their services, for they're going to they're 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 go ahead and process my building permit, but they say they will not give it to me because of this red tag violation. Until I come up with these things that are literally impossible for me to come up with, like um, a blueprint of what it looked like before the fire. I have no idea. Honestly, I have no idea. I don't even know how I could possibly comply with that. All the appeals processes that I get to go through are all contained within the same department. You know, and there, it's like I don't even get to get outside the department to try and appeal this. Um, it's no separation of power whatsoever. The county becomes our judge. They also make the code. 
to the our legislature, our judiciary, and their our punishment. This was just solid ash and burnt trees all the way to the ground, white ground. Um, Obviously the firemen aren't going to put out a bunch of trees when they're trying to save all the houses around the area. So they kind of contain the fire here, let it all burn to the ground. A few of the trees made it. I mean, they have some damage. They're starting to grow back. It's been about what, June 20th and it's now um, end of September. I had to drive actually through the creek up to get to my house. And um, I went to try and go get an emergency permit to uh, scoop out the silt and return my bridge to how it was. And they told me that um, it would take over a year to get the permit and they didn't even know if I could do it. And I couldn't use any tractors. I had to do it by hand with a biologist present on site. This is insanity. This yeah. is this is Nazi fucking Germany is what it is. The biologists are provided by the county for a fee. I didn't even get into that because there was... Wait, wait, a, uh, wait a minute. The biologists are, are charging a fee to sit there well, 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 well watch, watching you with a shovel, you know, alter or alter this so you could you could drive onto your own property. Right. And um, there was no way that I could scoop this out by hand with the shovel because it was like you step in it and you're knee deep in silt. So I had to break the law and get a tractor down here. And since I did that, Larkin Valley used to flood. This road out here used to flood when we got an inch and 24 hours of rain. They used to store a road close sign in my driveway and just move it out every time we even got a light to moderate rain. Since I did the work, the road hasn't flooded in the last two winters where it would have flooded multiple times and they would have left the sign here. You know, we just want to rebuild for our kids what we had, you know, the house. The, I mean, kids and I were at swim lessons, so we had bathing suits, flip-flops come home to nothing, you know. It's gone. <laughs> I mean, thanks to the community, people have donated stuff for us. You know, that's just personal property and we're living in a rental, but, you know, this is where home is supposed to be being rebuilt. And three and a half months later, we're waiting. We're, we're basically like we're in government housing, except for we're required to buy and maintain it how they want. We don't, it's not private property anymore. We're, we're required to maintain the property just how the government wants it. We're not allowed to maintain it at all without being, you know, a millionaire or something. This person is a victim, not only of a fire, which might be arson, but of the county that intends to steal this property. At the same time, we've got the Panettas and the Rockefellers and these other people buying, uh, putting other land into land trust in which they control. The Monterey Bay area is a very pleasant area for them to do their rural cleansing. This is exactly what the Wildlands Project is all about. They said they don't care, they're following an ordinance. And they keep coming up with ordinances that, that don't apply. They care less about the law. And this has to do with the damn district attorney in this area and county council. The attorneys that are supposed to be... Uh, yeah, uh, Officers of the court are doing the exact opposite. They're supposed to be in there protecting, providing the separation of powers, and they're doing the opposite. How, how, the, the, the how, head. how about that porky politician they call her the city manager? I mean, she's getting more than the vice president of the United States in salary. Two hundred and how much? Fifty thousand, or near the, nearly that, a quarter of a million dollars a year, while the people are starving. And absolutely, the, the, the chairman of the Board of Supervisors appoints her own husband to the planning department while this thievery is going on. And the Department of the Association of Realtors keep their people dumb and stupid because they control the education committee and the person that's in charge of that, or one of them, is Barbara Palmer, who took their money. What they used that money for was to give it to Sam Farr, who wrote the introduction to Agenda 21, doing the exact opposite. He, he, he exhibited more knowledge about health and safety codes and the, and the interpretations of what nuisance is and how it applies to cities and counties. Going up to the top of the hill, this is where the house used to be. It's about 800 feet or so down to what they call the sensitive habitat. So why the restoration of that um, is holding up my rebuilding of the house, which is way up here, I have no idea. 
sounds like we can work on the two things simultaneously and separately. The fact that they're not letting me rebuild my house because something that happened down there seems totally ridiculous. They should just let us rebuild, when we, when, especially when I give them all the permits that say I'm building to the uniform building code in the same exact well, spot. Well, see, that, that's what, now, look, this, that's what ties this thing in together here. The place burns down suspiciously. There's puffs of smoke going along from a, uh, in some unknown car. It wasn't started in one spot, right? It started in multiple spots. Your place burns down. Then they hassle you about rebuilding. They don't want you to rebuild, obviously. Obviously, because they're not even following state law. They're, they're making stuff up at this point. I think an executive order is exactly what it means, executive order from the governor of the state of California in an emergency. I mean, I don't know what kind of other spin you could put up. You know, if it was an executive order to kick all, everybody off their land, I'm sure they would have moved on it quick, you know? Well, one thing too, the code compliance officers didn't come here blindfolded. They didn't come on my property with blinders on and they red tagged me and their major thing was, oh, you cleared it down to the dirt. That's what they kept saying. You cleared the, you graded down to the dirt. And look across the hill over there, you know, that guy happens to, you know, they, they were clearly like looking right at that guy's property, which was look, that looked just like that at the time. And you know, nothing. They came here, they looked at the property behind here, which is, is down to the dirt. The property over there down to the dirt. That guy's land's down to the dirt. Everybody who got their foot, as they drove on Highway 1, on the way here, all the land on the side of the freeway, down to the dirt. Yeah, we have the red tag now, which means we can't touch anything, we can't drive this thing anywhere on this five acres, six acres, 5.8 acres. So, and you know, everything takes so many months and time, even though we're fire victims, everything's supposed to be pushed through and so quickened, big, but it's, we're three months out. If you have, if it's a, if there's enough individuals involved, uh, we'll, we'll set up a kind of a, you know, round table with the, the people affected and the agencies and to see if we can work through this. The governor signed an executive order saying any property owner that needed help protecting a watershed was actually supposed to get the labor furnished by the Department of Corrections to help protect the watershed and that they were waiving all permits and application fees um, to do any work for land clearing after the fire and to um, protect the watershed. These people are immovable and they're outside of the law. The county becomes our judge. They also make the code. They are legislature, our judiciary, and they're our punishment. All the appeals processes that I get to go through are all contained within the same department. You know, and they're, it's like I don't even get to get outside the department to try and appeal this. Specifically, what's going on here? Specifically, the county is harassing us about our property, saying that we have to haul off and clean and do to their rules what they want done. And well, is we this your property or is it their property? Our property. I didn't quite hear it's that. Our property. It's your yeah. property. Their alleged violations that they alleged a year ago. Who has all the pictures here? Uh, Tracy, what are the, what are the alleged violations that we're talking about here? Um, that we have too many vehicles. Too many vehicles, but isn't this is your property? Well, yeah, inoperable vehicles. Inoperable vehicles. That we had uh, some property that was uh, needed yeah. to be tore down, which, or, you know, we had an old house over yeah. here that's now gone. We had a, uh, this is road oil, they're calling it regular oil, but we got rid of that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just some odds and ends and stuff that was around the house that they liked us to get rid of which, as you can see, is all gone. 
Japan, they tried to say we were running a junkyard. Oh, what? yeah. That we had an illegal junkyard. A illegal wrecking yard. And these are just like, you know, vehicles and stuff. We used to have a trucking company, and they want us to clear up any remnants of the trucking company. You, but that was your business, right? Yeah, and we already won the, the right to own that business here. They rezone. What do you mean you have to have a right? Don't you automatically have the right to own your own no, no, business? No, that's my name. They rezoned the property around us back in 1950s. Uh -huh. And we had a trucking company for, here for almost 100 years. How are you involved with this? I live here. You live here? Yeah. And I was one of the ones who had the trucking company here. This is my dad. He's lived, he used to live in the house over there, which he sold because mm -hmm. he got tired of the harassment, harassment and stuff. And he finally moved out of here. But he lived on this piece of property for over uh, 90 years, 80 years. How old are you, sir? 83. You're 83. <clears throat> and you were born here? Born right here. Born in this house over here. How do you describe this? Is this... Uh, My dad lived here. He, uh, he was born in the 1800s. Yes. He come from Los Banos, so, yeah. Live with the Castros in a tent. And they want to take your place away. <laughs> they want to take your place away, sir? The harassment. But they don't know who they're after for years. Then I moved. And this is my dad. His great grandfather, which was Juan de la Pena, was the first one to be here. So there were five going on six generations in this one property. And the government's telling you what to do with your property, is that right? Mm -hmm. Constantly. And it's always been nothing but battling, 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 battling. This What's Agenda right? 21 is pretty vicious. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and that's what we're talking about. We hauled off, paid a lot of money out for one attorney, almost 40 grand. And then we finally ran out of cash. He got it settled. And here we are again. $40,000. You have to work for the sweat of your brow. Yeah. Look at all the corruption going on. Yeah, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Who you get in, who they get voted in. The planning department, Tom Burns, denied this man the right to the appeals board that's mandatory by law. The five supervisors appointed people to that appeals board, and that appeals board had never met in the seven years ever. And they reconstituted into a new kangaroo court, and they reappointed three of those people that never showed up for victims throughout this county, amounting to a half a billion dollars in damages. It's a violation of civil rights. It's a gross violation of due process and separation of powers. They control the planning commission as far as that appeals process consists because the chair of the supervisors appointed her own husband to the planning commission. And Campos, who was also under red tag uh, uh, threats, hired that particular man, put him on staff, and then appointed him to the planning commission. It's one big corrupt county that has a foreign agenda that's imposing its will on free Americans, people here, the pioneers themselves. Why are they doing this to you? <laughs> greed. It's greed. I a man sit over here and drink his booze and just look the place over. You'll never get it. Now, if he gets it, so help me if I'm still alive, so help me. I'm not going to be a happy, happy man. Long time, but doesn't mean we're done with them. I know. Whenever we win, they come back again. Come back a year later. They'll be back. It's always a year. Now after a year, they come back again. This is like fight number six for us. Oh, more than six. Ever since we were kids. Kids, growing up. Yeah, so. We've seen him fly away. I don't know how many left. Since we were taught. Anytime you start to move anything in the yard, boom, the county comes right in. Start shipping him paperwork, red tags. You gotta do this, you gotta do that. And it's just not right. Pushing people out of where, where they were raised and everything and where your family comes from, your roots are. There's no such thing. If you let people like this take over your life, what's the use in living? They're making it a communist country. You really don't have no rights. 
Is this a meeting or is it a circus? Good morning. Good morning. Who are we meeting with? Hi, Jeffrey. Hi, Jeffrey. My name is Ken Hart. Who? Ken Hart. Hi. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Great. Great. Jeffrey? Hello? Jeffrey, how you doing? I'm doing good. Good, good, good. Well, I'm uh, I'm glad you folks allowed us to come and do an inspection. I was a little concerned uh, last time we were here. Um, I spoke with your nephew, Anthony. Mm -hmm. And apparently he... There you are. How's it going? Good. I guess he didn't quite understand what we were hoping to do that day. Had a little miscommunication. So, let's see what we have here and what has been taken out. Are all these folks? I think I spoke to, was it uh, Tracy? Or? This is me. Hi, yeah, hi. Nice to meet you. And you had said you had made a lot of progress, so that's kind of what we're here to take yeah. a look at. Uh, what, is, what, what is the problem with the uh, all of the inspections? And, and who are you, sir? Anthony J. Hiller, okay. American you, Free Press. Okay. Are you the property owner? Are you related? No, to I'm the property owner? with the press. Okay. Well, I'm not <laughs> here to talk to the press. You're not here to talk. You're, no, you, I'm here you, to. You, you can answer a question, though, right? No, I'm you here. You can't answer a question. No, I'm busy. I'm. <clears throat> I'm meeting with. You can't answer Ms. a question. Dela, no, I'm not going to answer your question because ask him the question. I'm here they to, they to, to, know to meet with Mr. Dela Pena uh -huh. and to resolve these issues. He wants to know what's in his closet. Is what he wants to know. If it's okay that he has certain clothes. What do you got in your closet for clothes, Mr. Dela Pena? I was hoping we could, with your permission, of course, walk around the property and verify what's been removed and what might still need to be removed. So we can just we think it's fine. resolve this What do you matter. think from right here? Yeah, I thought it was a nuisance from the road. That's what we need to know. That's what That's you file a complaint. I'm here to speak with, with Jeffrey. I've asked his permission. We're required to ask folks permission to go on a property. They have a right to deny us entry. And that's and what happened. Tag it, that's, that's what happened last month. So when I spoke with Aunt, with your nephew, mm -hmm. I was here under official county business, and I asked him. I explained why I was here, and he denied me entry. And so I have to do my job. So when people prevent me from doing my job, let me finish. When people pre prevent me from doing my job, I have to get. I have to request an inspection warrant from the judge. That's what we do when folks, when we have an active case on a property, when there's active code violations, or if we have to inspect, and if people don't let us do our job, we get what's called an inspection warrant. And that's what is I there, got. Has there been a crime committed here? Now, I was hoping... <laughs> I ask you a question. Has there been a crime committed here? I was hoping you would allow us to take a look around to see what's back here so we can close this case and we'll be done with this case. I can close it, we can resolve it. If you've, if things have been done, then I need to verify that that's part of my job. The first time, we pretty much did a lot. You did a lot. And, and you tried to say, no, then you come back and you say, we didn't do enough. Then you come back, you're gonna bring sheriffs, you're gonna bring all these people to clean out my yard. That's not right. That would be like me going to your house and saying, Cut your grass. It's not okay. short enough. Okay. I know you're upset. Yeah, I'm very upset. upset. That's why I stay away from you because okay. you, as far as I'm concerned, me and you, we don't get along. Okay. Well, we want to resolve this issue. We just want to make sure everything gets done. See, I can't hey, close the case you know until what? everything's You can close done. the case, but what did you tell me? You said it would be nice. Then you put in your letter afterwards that house had to be demoed. I told you why it was there. You said, I'm just recommending it. You don't have to. You can put seal it up where people can't get into it. Then you write into your letter afterwards. The original red tag didn't have that. You tried to say I was running a salvage yard here with all the cars. No. Daniel? I was, wasn't running a wrecking oh, yard. I have all the paper I have all the paperwork in the file. Everything, all the letters I sent you that basically described the violations and described what time frame you had. Described but the, the house was not Jeffrey in there originally. Signed. Jeffrey signed an agreement that this would be all cleaned up by November of last year, of last year. So all I'm here to do is to verify that it's been done. That's all I'm here for. I'm not, I don't need to go in your house. I'm not interested no, no, in your I, house. I, I, I just need to verify that, you know, the vehicles here are all registered. I know you, you and I had an agreement. I said, Daniel, you and can it keep, was being let me done. finish, let me finish. You can keep two junk cars or inoperable vehicles in the back out of public view. 
even though this is zoned commercial agriculture, it's not residential, it's zoned commercial agriculture. In a commercial agriculture zone, you can't have any kind of unregistered or inoperable vehicle. But I gave that to you. I made sure that I was being fair with you to keep those things back here. I don't, you don't, I don't have to do that for you, but I did. In the interest of moving the case along and getting things finished. Remember, last year we talked about the big giant commercial truck you had back here. I said, you, what's that? There was nothing wrong with that. Exactly. And we made a deal, you and I, verbally, that, that you can keep that truck here. I didn't say, oh, you got to remove the truck. I said, you could keep that truck. In the interest of closing the case and resolving this problem, I gave you those things. You, I gave those concessions to you. Technically, no, you can't have any junk cars in the CA zone. But in the interest of moving things along and trying to be fair with you, I let you keep those things. Are you are you, are you saying that uh, that you that, that you, Mr. Rodriguez, gives Remember permission that? to people Remember to uh, to allow uh, somebody to keep a truck on their own property? So that's that's basically what I'm here for. <coughs> I tried to work with you. you. You've done some. You've cleaned up quite a bit. We just want to finish it. We just want to make sure it's done. That's why I'm here. Do you, uh, do you have the authority as an as an individual coming over? So hopefully, representing Jeffrey representing the government and telling will, uh, him what to do or will anybody allow else what to do to walk and and just take a look. So you're going to ignore what I what I'm asking, right? I'm not here to talk to you. I'm here to talk to Mr. Delapena and his family. I'm here to talk to you. No. Oh. You know you know what? Why didn't you when it was flooding when I was still here? You people didn't do nothing because it floods here every year. Mm -hmm. Low spot in the mm -hmm. road, right? Hey Jeffrey, is there any way we could, here? we could kind of move this along? Because sir, I got to get back. Yeah, let him. And you're, you know, I, unfortunately, okay. you're, because it's an active, active case, you're being charged for this time. So the, the more time we spend you're here, you're charging them money for this. Um, you're it's charging them case. money for coming out. So here I would and suggest to them? we kind of move this, move is this along, what, is that what that so we can kind of finish they're charging, up here. They're charging. They're charging. So this truck is currently raised per hour. Look at it. For know, this guy you know coming this out, I mean, this is outrageous. Yeah. You're in my way. You're gonna have to move out of my way. Okay. Thank you very much. These uh, men coming into this property telling these people who've been up here for a hundred years what to do. They're charging you. In this particular county, they're red tagging you. This is your stuff here? Yeah. Okay. Is this, is this stuff that you want to keep? Taking your homes, your income, your freedoms your future excuse me no you know what we'll we'll get in the truck and leave and then we won't be resolving any, any situations today I, i'm not interested in being on camera just and regulating your children that's what they do they say well it's their job we send an expungement request to our fiscal staff they look at the time that's been put into it and they send out the, it's basically, it's a, we, we get charged, the, the planning department gets charged by the recorder's office to do an expungement, that fee is $93, so we ask the property owner mm -hmm. to pay that and then any time that the investigator is put in to the case, and in this case it's about $1,200, that that be paid yeah, prior, yeah, to, prior to the uh, expungement and then we're done. So you're charging these people 1200 That's correct. And what service are you providing to these people? Well, I'm, um, we're, we're fulfilling a mandate by the Board of Supervisors that the code compliance section not be completely funded by the general fund. I did, that's not the question I asked. I said, what service yes, are you sir. providing to these people for the 1200 We put in $1,200 worth of time into this case. Mm -hmm. Is the case was the case against them? Yeah, the complaint was about this piece of property, right? The way typically right. So I think we're done. It's like in Castro's Cuba, and, and I don't, I don't know. In Europe, well, they send our bill. I mean, we Jake can send the expungement request to our fiscal staff today. Mm -hmm. I don't know what their timing is, but it's within a few days that they send out. No, they're pretty busy. It's more like okay, okay, and that that. 
information would come to oh, it's the, the person it's the on person title. On the title. It would go so, to Jeffrey. Yeah, I could. Right. So I could CC you a copy if you like. We can do that. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Wherever well, the tax bill goes, that's what we. Use. Jeffrey will send it to you, and then I'll send a copy to Tracy. Okay. Yes. All right. Everybody knows this. That's all. All right. Thanks for your time. Thank you, folks. We need to expose these criminals. We need to make sure that they are the ones going to prison instead of property owners. I understand you had an off-road bike in the back and they wanted to uh, uh, tag you for an off-road bike that didn't need licensing to begin with because it's off-road? Exactly. <laughs> I mean, they, they, they don't care. They, they, whether it's in the code or whether it's in the law, something as simple that anybody can understand, they're willing to violate and red tag and push you around. Exactly. Uh, specifically with the off-road bike, it's like all you got to do is be 16 and not take it on the road. No big deal. 